Okay, so we have Derek on the line from New Zealand, of all places. So thanks for joining us, Derek. I understand you have a, a new book you wanted to talk about. So my new book is uh, Santa Cruz Trains, Reflections on the Mountain Route. Uh, and it honestly was something I kind of had planned early on and then forgotten about. It was, it, I had come across all these really obscure, strange, fun quotes during my uh, research and some of them I kind of just set aside, and uh, I don't know, about three months ago, I suddenly remembered the project where I was looking through some old notes and went on newspapers, went into old books, just started searching around for some of these really fun quotes and uh, paired them with some photos that weren't used uh, in my first book, um, because honestly, I've found so many photos since that book came out, and I also had a bunch that I just wasn't able to use. Uh, for various reasons, and I just, I don't know, I felt like comparing the two of them together, it just seemed natural, and it seemed really fun, and I'm quite happy with the results. Yeah, I noticed that when I opened up the preview that you sent me, that it has a lot of very interesting quotes, and I, I picked one of my favorites that I'll share later. But uh, yeah, this new book, though, is called Santa Cruz Trains, Reflections on the Mountain Route. And for people who are interested, it's available on Amazon, I'm sure other places too, huh? Yeah, it's available on Amazon, on CreateSpace. Um, it will be available at Book Santa Cruz. It's available at the train shop in in uh, Santa Clara. And I'm still working on distribution for other places, but it should be at pretty much all the same places that Santa Cruz trains, railroads at Santa Cruz Mountains available at. Part of the intent was to uh, have something almost exactly the opposite of the... Uh, uh, original book, something that literally is just a coffee table book. You can just set it there. You can pick it up, read a couple pages, look at the pictures, and set it back down. One of the things that I thought was kind of cool about it is that these are quotes that aren't just trite quotes. Some of them are actually pretty profound, and I think that they reflect the the route actually very well. You know, having been over the Santa Cruz Mountains many times, and our experience in in recording for the beach train video where we were all up and down that portion of the line between Felton and Santa Cruz, I can totally see what the people in the quotes were talking about, you know, and it's still like that even now, a hundred and, you know, 20 years later, almost. Yeah. I'd say that the, the route uh, between Felton and Santa Cruz today is probably the closest it's ever been to what it originally looked like in 18. 18- 80, 1875, like when some of these earliest quotes are reflecting, uh, they, the authors really like talking about how picturesque the route is, how loud yet, I don't know, even like profound the river is down below as it's going along the cliff top in San, uh, San Lorenzo Gorge. It's just like, it's very interesting to see how the, how a hundred and, what, 140 years after some of these quotes are dated, they, uh, it actually seems more relevant than it used to. Right. And that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Having been there, right. Knowing the other book was such a historical book, meaning, you know, it had to be very accurate historically and so forth. What What's the difference between that and just putting together something that's more of, of this sort of uh, coffee table, pick it up and look at it. Is, is there a different difference in approaches that that's really stark? The researching is what's really weird because I mean, the formatting was actually very straightforward. The The concept was very straightforward. Um, and a lot of the images I had, I think the final count was uh, 31 images made it into the book and 32 quotes. And I pretty much knew, I had about 50 images that I was looking at. And so those were the ones I was looking at to pair uh, with the quotes. And the quotes were the harder thing to find. I only had about 40 good quotes I really liked. So I had to pair those down a little, but not as much. But the real interesting thing was trying to find the quotes because literally I was going through everything. Fortunately, a lot of the documents are now, um, a lot of these older documents are now public domain. I was able to find, um, what was it, Harrison's uh, History of Santa Cruz County, which had some of the quotes, uh, which were really good. There, Some of the quotes in there are from that. And then I'm looking at newspapers. I'm finding on archive.org all sorts of Southern Pacific propaganda. <laughs> um, I found Sunset Magazine, uh, which was also owned by Southern Pacific at the time. And so all of this was very interesting. So I'm just, 
I'm pretty much just going through things, looking up keywords, trying to find uh, really interesting quotes that I didn't even know existed. And one thing I kept finding was the term picturesque ended up being a keyword for our area. It seemed uh, Southern Pacific really liked to emphasize the picturesque nature of Santa Cruz. Um, so trying to not overuse that word ended up being a problem because some of the quotes I had to intentionally move apart from each other just because it was going to have like five quotes in a row that were all talking about the picturesqueness of <laughs> the Santa Cruz mountains. Uh, but yeah, in the end, it was very strange because unlike the Santa Cruz trains, uh, the first book where I had a very defined sequence of how everything had to be organized, this one, literally my partner and I just got the quotes all printed out, the images all printed out on the floor of our living room, and we just started pairing things together, looking for which ones worked best together, and then after that, we just put them in a logical order. The, you may notice the best pictures are at the beginning, the middle, and the end, and the slightly less good ones are kind of in between, and that's intentional, so if people pull it open and they turn to different pages, they'll get the best ones first, but yeah, I mean, it was an interesting challenge. It was very different than writing a history book. Yeah, well, I, I don't mean to sound like I'm, you know, kissing up or anything, but I didn't find any bad pictures in it. I just, it's just a relaxing kind of book to me to look at. And like I said before, having been there and knowing the area, I totally get it. You have a website that's santacruztrains.com, right? Yes. Uh, I've had that website since, I want to say 2012, um, although I, it started as a blog in 2011. And yeah, it's continuing to grow. It, it Honestly, I surprised myself. I've been doing, for the last few months, I've been doing a series on Cannery Row, um, mostly the canneries because they all use the Southern Pacific Spur that runs bet behind. Uh, it's the it's the trail there that's uh, the Monterey Sanctuary t Trail that now runs uh, parallel to Cannery Row. That used to be the right-of-way, so all these canneries used to have access to it. And so that's kind of been my main focus. I'm almost done with that series, and... I don't know. I've got a number of different directions I can go after this, so I haven't yet quite decided where the website's going next. Do you have a book in the works, too, about that? Or is that just... You know, last time we talked not to you... Not for Monterey, at least not yet. <laughs> that, that was the joke last time. I remember that from the last podcast we had you on. You were talking about getting all this information, and people were prodding you about doing that. Yeah, well... It seems that there is actually a hole in the research when it comes to uh, a history of the canneries themselves. And so I'm not saying there's not something that could be there, but it's not my first priority. My my main priority, whenever I am able to get back to the United States and actually do some real on-site research, is to uh, research the coastal route, the one that's now owned by the uh, city of Santa Cruz um, or the Regional Transportation Commission and whatnot, um, Pretty much my goal is to write a book that talks about that. It would also include things like the Aptos branch and the Ocean Shore uh, Railroad that went up the coast at least a little ways. I'm not going to do the uh, San Francisco end, only the Santa Cruz County end. Um, and then I've got a couple other little things that I probably will include, like the San Juan Pacific Railroad that used to go to San Juan Batista and maybe even parts of the, uh, the Pajaro Valley Consolidated Railroad. Well, there's plenty to do, I guess. <laughs> plenty of history in yeah. the area for that. So, yeah, right, I expect well. the next book to be at least the same size as the current the <laughs> current large book. <laughs> <laughs> well, and who knows? Maybe you'll do a, a picture type book of that next one too. You know, we we'll, guess we'll find I out. Fully expect I'll have the material <laughs> for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it, and congratulations! You're the first ever video interview on our podcast. So. Happy New Year, and, and you, you have a place in TSG Multimedia history now. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, and uh, yeah, yeah uh, call me up again sometime. All right, okay. thanks, Derek. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, just for our listeners, again, the website is santacruztrains.com. Lots of information there. And then the new book is Santa Cruz Trains, Reflections on the Mountain Route. Probably easiest to find on Amazon, I would think. That's where I found it first.